you know what's going on? Maybe it's another drill. Commence primary ignition. Four Midwest Guys presents... Parsecs of the Force. A time for everything Star Wars. Stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. I have waited a long time for this moment. I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. This will be a day long remembered. I found a great disturbance in the falls. We would be honored if you would join us. Punch it! Everybody and welcome to Star Wars Part Six of the Force. We've been gone a little while, but we're back, and we've got an awful lot to cover. And as always, is Mister here with me to help me break it all down? Is Mister Brian Ankabauer? Hey, what's up? What's up? What's going on, B? Nothing much, man. All right. Well, we got so much to cover. Well, let's just skip the uh, pleasantries, as they say. As Vader would say. <laughs> we'll skip all the introductions and go straight into the business. Right to business. And our first story is, there is a story out there that Episode 9 may actually be split into two parts. Um, yeah, I will say, the. let me just start off by saying this. If the death of a franchise. <laughs> it worked for Harry Potter, somewhat. I will try to defend this for, for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. It, okay. It didn't work for other franchises. Um, however... I am more in favor of doing episode 9 and episode 10 and making a, a quadrilogy rather than splitting it 9 into two parts. If you have enough story, then yeah. maybe. Right. Um, but if they they drop it right in the middle of the movie, right, you know, and try to put a cliffhanger in the middle of the movie, and yeah, that's just not going to work for Star Wars, I don't think. Nope. But it'll, it'll work for, uh, it'll work for at-home movie sales because people will wait and then buy them when they can put them together. <laughs> and finally get one episode nine yeah, out of it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm okay with the three-hour Star Wars movie. I know that's a little bit much for general audiences. I know that also cuts into ticket sales because you can only put up so many movies in a day um, with that kind of time frame. You, you can only sell out so many movies in that certain time frame. Right, exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I Like I said, if you're going to do this, then have a full movie episode 9 and then do a full movie episode 10 and make sure that there's plenty of story for both you know and that there's a plot and there's a reason and there's storylines even if they're just continuing storylines into 10 um you know general storylines from 9 to 10 that's fine but you need to have you need to have the you know the intro the middle and the end you know the rising action and right right yeah, everything all but that not stuff all of a sudden, and you're in the movie theater, and it's like intermission. Let's, let's begin. begin. <laughs> you know, I would be. You know, I would not be opposed to bringing back intermissions, especially for Star Wars movies. I tell you they used what, to do it for like South Pacific, and you know, back in the day with all. The It'd be interesting movies. if they did that. Yeah, just uh, you know, hey, we're gonna take a break for about 15, 20 minutes, <laughs> and it's like, and this is no seriously, go to the bathroom, bathroom <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> But yeah, uh, or it'd be funny if they had somebody come up with like Jedi rope. You will go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you will come back. But you'd have those people who didn't realize that that well, that was really weird. They ended it with an intermission. What the hell is an intermission? <laughs> you guys didn't save for the second half of the movie. Yeah, I, I honestly hope they don't do this. I, I I think this would be a really bad move. Um, I agree, especially coming off of eight and, and like, all that. Like uh, push the envelope. Go two hours and thirty five minutes. Go two hours and. You know what 50 I mean? minutes. Yeah, I mean, you, you know. can push push the envelope, but yeah. don't push the envelope to make it two parts. And I admit, uh, he's got a lot of work to do, and I, I get that, especially after eight. There's not much to work with going forward. We don't know where it's going to go, and he's got a lot. If he's really, because they're, the rumor is, is we've talked about this in the past, they are ending the Skywalker saga. So that needs to be done right. So if it takes this trilogy to become four movies, then so be it, in my opinion. do If you're going to do it, do it right. Don't make part episode nine's part one and two, in my opinion. Make it episode ten. Who cares? You know. So I agree. That's my final thought on that. All right. So let's move into our next topic, and we have our first set photos from episode nine. We're gonna put ourselves up here in the corner, and uh, we'll let's so you guys get a better shot of the, some of these pictures. Um, so these first two, it looks like we are on a planes world. 
of some sort. Mm -hmm. I'd say the first picture is probably just the cast walking up a path, wouldn't you say? Right, yeah, walk, like walking up to the field where they're going to shoot. shoot. Yeah. Um, and the only Plains field that we, we were talking about this off camera, mm -hmm. the only Plains field that we had was Lothal. Lothal. Um, which would be awesome if that's what they're going to do. Right, and tie it into, tie it into uh, Rebels. Rebels and stuff like that. That would be pretty sweet. Um, and you get a few of the uh, cast members. I think as cool as her hair looks, uh, I think the African-American woman there in the middle, I think she may just be there for makeup or something like that because of what she's wearing compared to everybody else. Um, the others pair to be in, you know, um, you know, some sort of like they've crash landed and they're wearing ponchos or maybe that's just what they wear on this planet. Uh, compared to her, although I really like her hair, and I hope I kind of wish she was a character in Star Wars with that big old floofy hair, but I don't think she is. But um, they all seem to be kind of wearing uh, kind of looks like a cross between Rogue One and uh, Jedi clothing, Brian. Mm -hmm. You know, they got that camo on, kind of sort of. Uh, it looks like the two ladies, the one lady just may be wrapped up in something like she's a, well, you, she's recovering from a crash or something well that's what i was gonna say it kind of looks like they're like they're like they're survivors from a crash yeah it's like almost looks like maybe some kind of a bandage on her head maybe and, and they're wrapped up yeah with like, like blankets and stuff that they've taken from the crash or whatever i don't know and that they survived something mm -hmm. the only guy that looks like he means to be wearing that clothing is the the african-american gentleman there on the far end he actually looks a little bit more tidy i mean i like the guy the guy in the jean shorts with the water bottle that's kind of cool yeah that's awesome right there man that's that says star that's scream star wars dude heck yeah yeah right on from the planet denim <laughs> dude jean shorts were out years ago man come on <laughs> come on all right so uh let's go to the next set of pictures oh wrong that's on me next picture uh so this is the three shots they got of Finn and Poe. So we know Finn and Poe are on this planet. Chasing the mummy. Chasing the mummy. <laughs> Dressed as, it's a Halloween costume party. One's going as the, uh, from Brandon Fraser's The Mummy, and the other one's going as Han Solo. Han Solo. With the classic blue pants with, with some sort of a stripe down them. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, from, the, from the planet Denim. <laughs> the planet Denim. Watch out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's not exactly camo for, uh, for Finn, is it? No. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in those pants where yeah. at least Finn, or, yeah, Poe kind of blends in a little bit. Yeah, because he's on safari, safari. in the high grass. <laughs> kind of does. He, he has a, yeah, he's got that Indiana Jones look kicking with uh, the Star Wars boots and everything. <laughs> so, uh, hard to say at this point. I... I, I can't even begin to speculate what they're going, what's going on here. But it is kind of cool doing. that we're seeing this kind of this kind of stuff first. I can't wait to see yeah. it in the movie and go like, ah, that's what that's it was. That's that part, right? Or hopefully it doesn't get cut or anything. You never know. But, uh, but yeah, I, I would really, you know, I would love for this to be Lothal. And speaking of Lothal, this next picture, and you brought this point up, Brian. I'll let you uh, run with this one. Um, pointing out to the horses there. Go ahead. Oh yeah, because we were talking, we were talking about it being Lothal, and we're like, we're trying to figure out what the horses were, mm -hmm. and maybe that the horses with the the, the get up that's on their face, the lights, is for like CGI. Yeah, the CGI, like so the motion capture for the faces and stuff, so they know where to place the image, mm -hmm. and perhaps those are the the gray wolves from Lothal from Lothal that they rode. That could be dead on, and what better way to get a natural motion? And rather use the horses for giant wolves because they, they kind of did that whole thing with episode eight where, where they're riding whatever those creatures were. And it just didn't look right. Right. It looked too CGI. So at least this way you get the natural motion out of it. And w I mean, the only thing that would be different, and I think, is because the one guy's on a saddle. But man, that would be freaking cool if they bring the wolves back. It would be neat. I mean, you know. So we were thinking it was either that or maybe like. Um like the banthas, Band, like, it was a like, bantha, like a miniature bantha, or a tauntaun yeah. kind of looking thing. So we'll see how it is, but you can definitely tell that they're it's some kind of creature because yeah. I, I find it hard to believe they're going to leave that the gray long haired with the, with body the, with the black face, black faces, and the just like lighted, uh, yeah, um, what do they call those uh, mounts, manes, manes, yeah, or no, um, I know bridles, yeah, bridles, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really I love that idea. Um, that that really gets me excited, especially being a huge Rebels fan. That that could indeed be both wolves on Lothal. That would be sweet and awesome. And uh, you know what? I just figured out that maybe that our African American woman is in Star Wars all of a sudden because that looks like that same crazy hair, except now she's all dressed up with so, denim. With denim. 
What is going on with this movie, Brian? It's denim. It's the new Star Wars style. <laughs> They're bringing it back, baby. Oh my goodness. 1980, all over again. <laughs> Levi's paid a lot to have <laughs> be in the movie. Sure did. Sure did. Short ash, baby. It's coming back. <laughs> Okay, and this last one is actually from MakingStarWars.net, completely different site. Um, but this picture looks to be, if you look in the uh, the background there, it looks to be the Millennium Falcon, at least part of the set, if not the whole Falcon, um, in the background. And obviously, it's in a wooded area. Um, so, a lot of people online, and I, I, I it could be uh, Endor. Um, you know they are wrapping up the Skywalker saga. They want to pull all three trilogies together. Why not go back to a classic planet? Um, the only thing I have issue with if they would use this kind of shot is, and I know this is nitpicking big time, uh, is the trees. Uh, when they shot in Endor, they shot in the giant redwood forest. So obviously it's a completely different looking tree than what we got here. Now obviously the lower plant life and stuff you could obviously. Yeah, you know, if they shoot low enough, you could get right. Away I mean, you with got it. some some ferns and stuff in there, right? Or CGI some stuff in. Uh, you might be able to get away with it. Brian, uh, the other thing we were talking about is that could this could be Maz Maz's planet? Yeah, which I think's more likely. You know, because maybe there's more Jedi relics or artifacts or well, that's, something. Well, that's, that know? was the other thing I was going to say is that maybe maybe Ray remembers certain things from that room. Yeah, and she, she goes, goes back, back to get them. Another Force vision. Or, or some sort of, you know, relic or something. Moss has something else to give her, you know, who knows. Uh, in part is because, you know, I, I when it comes to Nine, I'm not sure. Yeah, and they're saying there's going to be a huge time jump, so she'll have some some training on her own. And I'm sure maybe Luke's helping her as a, a ghost in between, too. But still, I would think there's a ghost. there's still, uh, well, it's possible, too. We'll see. Uh, we'll still see. He's alive. You know, that she still needs a little help um, getting her, you know, becoming a Jedi essentially mm -hmm. kind of like Luke didn't come into his own until Return of the Jedi I think the same will be with Rey well maybe she doesn't want to be a Jedi on. or that's possible too maybe she turned away like Luke did um, hope not but um, she used the best of both worlds uh, I don't want the gray Jedi crap gray Jedi. Jedi screw the gray Jedi stuff but anyway uh, yeah so uh, Millennium Falcon on some sort of a uh, um, forested planet let us know what you think uh, reach out to us and, and let us know what you guys think maybe there's something else out there in a book or something or another reference that I'm just not thinking about right now um, but I, yeah I would say if I had to I'd say 45% well 40% Endor I'd lean more 60% to Maz's castle planet um, I don't know right now anyway yeah so alright so let's move on to our, let me get rid of all this. Should have been doing this the whole time. <laughs> and switches over to our next topic. And as you may know, uh, there was a little uh, trailer that was released. Uh, some would say maybe even controversial, uh, but the uh, first trailer for the new animated Star Wars series, Star Wars Resistance, uh, dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think it's only fair to watch it now on uh, and uh, let us know what you guys think about it here real quick <coughs> can you imagine what it's like I to love be the action pilot? action looks BB-8 looks good mm -hmm. See, this action is your right chance there. to make so much that better. true I've got a mission for you. Well, it's a lot easier yes. to do when you're not trying to do 3D. Yeah. Blend in, find out better. who's loyal to the good guys and who isn't. But it is hard to watch in 2D a little bit. What was that? What was what? The throwing and the for you, Over for there. people who are really in, into the 3D after Clone Wars team. and that. But... Get ready to be impressed. But when it comes to your mission as a spy, I don't want anything to do with it. Oh, you've got here. to be kidding me. Ultron. <laughs> I just wanted to wish my competition good luck. This is fine. I'm fine. Just be careful and don't explode. I'm doing my best. This should be good. Here we go. Star Wars Resistance, in all new series, premieres Sunday, October 7th at 10 on Disney Channel. Yes! Okay, uh, I'll switch back over to the main screen here. And, uh, so... Um, a couple things, obviously, to take away is is the first thing is this is a different style altogether. Um, this is not the 3D that we're used to uh, with Clone Wars or Rebels. Clone Wars was very was groundbreaking, very detail oriented, very sharp edges, 
3D Very boxy images. In some instances, especially early on, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Rebels kind of smoothed all that over. It was 3D. It was more round. It wasn't as detailed, but it was, you know, it was still a nice 3D looking uh, show. This one, by comparison, when they show the ships, it looks, it's drawn 3D on a 2D mat. With computer assistance, obviously. Um, but I love the action. Like, my one problem I always had with Rebels, and a little bit of Clone Wars too, is with the 3D animation, it almost, the action was always maybe just a notch too slow. Like when you saw the ships move, and how, mm -hmm. you know, because yep. compared to the movies, you're, you're, you know, used to a lot quicker. Now, they got better as time went on uh, with Rebels, but um, this, the one thing that I can definitely take away from this trailer is the action is much more fluid uh it's much more quick it's it, it feels more natural as far as the action what do you think brian yeah i mean the ships everything with the ships look really well look really really done well yeah. uh, i think the only thing we're gonna have an issue with i'm not gonna have an issue with it i really enjoy the saturday morning cartoon style mm -hmm. i really hate the 3d stuff yeah but um the only thing we're gonna have an issue with is like the faces yeah because when they do the the dead on shot to me i'm like i'm like, not used like, to that like their nose looks a little different different yeah um but yeah this trailer though wasn't it wasn't a trailer to tell you the story it was a trailer to show you shots like real fast right you know it's only a minute trailer so we're, we're probably getting another one with more of story about different characters mm -hmm. so i'm waiting for those but overall i'm i like this this style of animation of animation it's it's not anime it's just anime inspired right which is what i was worried about when they said originally they said it was gonna be anime like yeah. and i'm like you're, you're really Dragon Ball Z or yeah, something. Yeah, I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. But this, this Force is Force Ball of Lightning. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is good. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, and, and I've seen a lot of criticism online. They're like, this is only for kids. You know what? It, it, it's a trailer for but, Disney XD for starters. Well, no, is it, no. Well, this is a channel. This is a trailer for Disney, right? Because the first, one, first episode, first one hour long episode, yeah. Is on Disney, and then after that it goes to Disney XD. So it could be just trying to get the audience to switch over, right. because on Disney XD they'll be able to show a little more stuff because it's supposed to be mm -hmm. more adult-like. Yep. Um, but people said the same thing about Rebels when it first came out, sure and, they, did. and they said that it was said the same thing about Clone Wars. That it was it was it was very kid-like. Yep. And then as it progressed through, yep. you saw more more storylines, more everything else, and people yeah. got involved with the characters. So well, it was like when they started to Clone Wars, they hated Ahsoka. Because she said stuff like Sky Guy and all this stuff and r and all this stuff. They're like, Anakin Skywalker had a, a Padawan? This is horrible. It's terrible. It's sacrilege. And by the end of the series, she's the most beloved character pretty much in Star Wars. She's up there in the <coughs> top five at least right now. Um, you know, and so that just shows you how it evolves. Same thing with Ezra when we started Rebels. People were like, oh, he's an Aladdin ripoff. He's the street rat. Oh, I've seen this. This Disneyfication of Star Wars. You know? Oh, he's going off with Zeb to steal a TIE fighter. Big whoop de doo But yet, by the time we got to the end of Season 2, even Season 1, people are going, Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, Star Wars is back. Star Wars, Best Star Wars storytelling ever. Love it. Great. Amazing. Right. I think we're going to get the same thing. <coughs> the only other part I, point I'm going to bring up right now is there is a high probability, from what we've seen so far, that this series may be force-free or Jedi free so far unless they're hiding it really well. Well, I'm sure they are. You I'm know. sure they're not going to give they're not going to give away all their stuff in the yeah. in the first 1 minute trailer. I know. It, but you know, I was I went back and I looked at the Rebels trailer and they review they re revealed right away that Kanan was going to be a Jedi. Well, that, because yeah. that was part of the that was part, part of part the of thing. thing. Is the training of the right, you know. But so you know, that's my only issue I might have. Because if we have a Star Wars series, a Star Wars cartoon series, especially without lightsabers and Jedi or Sith or dark light side and dark side users, um, well, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna get the um, the New World Order, not the New World Order. First, <laughs> Jesus, N -W -O. yeah, NWO. We're definitely gonna first get the, like we're definitely gonna get the first order in this because yeah. one of the scenes that the base is being attacked. Mm. Um, so and like that's the whole mission is to see who's for the good side who's for the you know who's for the bad side right and i i, I feel like after watching this that of those looks like five main characters we're gonna get yeah that one or two of them at some point are going to split and they're going to be on the bad side 
and we're gonna have fallen for, you know like fallen for that like oh we like them and now they're on the bad side and yeah um they could be hiding it and you're right it's only a one minute minute trailer i'm that's my only concern really other than getting used to the animation which i'll get used to pretty quick i think yeah. is um the only and I, I got to thinking about it and i will speculate if they are hiding a jedi in this story it might be that jaeger character uh, the guy that says, you can be part of my team, but I want nothing to do with your spy business. Mm -hmm. He could be a Jedi hiding out. Yeah, like a, like a, like a Kanan like, was? Like Yeah, like Kanan was. Or he could be maybe, you know, one of Luke's fallen, or, you know, Luke's Jedi that escaped the, the Jedi Temple. Escaped the Jedi Temple, um, which would be interesting. Um, so that could, could be the be. only place where I could see where they're hiding it. Well, I wonder if they bring in the Knights of Ren or anything into this. I would love to see that. That I, the Knights of, and that's one thing a lot of people want to see in Episode Nine too is the Knights of Ren because we got that Force Vision. They all look freaking super cool. They all had weapons of some kind. I mean, Kylo was the only one with a lightsaber, but who are they? What are they? Are they? partially you know some of, are they the ones that that a handful of luke's jedi that he took with him you know and what what is it you right know? and then they were telling they were talking about this t this taking place right before force awakens mm -hmm. which we start the force awakens with poe with getting the uh the map so right. we i wonder if we'll see how the map ends up in yeah that guy's hands when you told me that that's an interest that's very interesting because i was thinking this is oh, okay we're like five years away from force awakens but if we're only six months away yeah we're gonna see a hell of a lot of connections between into the force awakens through the force awakens and after the force awakens because i can't see a four to five year season show on six months i mean i mean i know it's star wars but <laughs> yeah. Star Wars version of 24, 24 every episode yeah, a day it's a day or an hour um, <laughs> but yeah uh, so yeah um, yes it, a lot of good stuff I think I think everybody's gonna be pleasantly surprised I think everybody that's already hating on it pull back the reins it's only it's been one trailer that's that's it <laughs> plus it's a kid's if, if it, anything yeah. and if anything it is what we thought it was because it's a kid's show targeted towards kids exactly so you can't fault it hey, there if you got kids and you like star wars what better way you know that's what i did with my daughter we watched rebels together she loves rebels that's think, what started her now she's watching the movies yeah so so one of the, one know. of the um one of the online guys he said um he goes it's not like they came out and told us hey this is for all the star wars fans um he said he, he just wishes they would have said if it is going to be that he wished they would have came out and said this is based this is this is for to get new Star Wars fans, this is a this is going to be entry target, level, yeah, yeah targeted at entry level to get them excited into the new Star Wars, mm -hmm. not you know for everybody else. Right. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I you know, and if that's all it is, great. You know, but I think it's going to be a lot more. Yeah, I really do. I think I. This is the other thing to take away from from Resistance, and I, I just thought about this is. This is, and Filoni has said, said so as much in interviews, is this is Filoni letting, he's involved, he helped get it started, but he said he's letting other people step forward and are giving them the opportunity that they deserve. So this is Filoni's first chance from going from, so if you think about it, Filoni was trained by George Lucas, worked with him on the Clone Wars, went out on his own, became a Jedi Knight, let's just say, for reference with rebels and now he's a master and now he has his own apprentice he has his own padawans now leading star wars resistance so um yeah it'll be interesting to see how let's call it feloni's padawans do his, you know his trainees do on uh their own show which is pretty much what this is which so, i'm not too keen on though well everybody gets scared when somebody new comes on but you know we'll see i, I think they're in good hands and i think if they make a too many wrong turns floating will be there to write the course so all right even though i think he's very busy with that uh favreau live action series and speaking of which speaking of favreau's live action series uh so the latest news on that front is is that the live action series will actually be set in mandalore so we're going to get more mandos um after return of the jedi though um, Brian, what do you think about the possibility of doing a Mandalorian Star Wars live action series? I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it. I really, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the Mando stuff I really enjoy, mm -hmm. um, you know, Boba Fett and, and Sabine and everybody, but 
I don't know if I want a live action. You don't know if you want a whole series based on it. Yeah, because well, you know what it feels like. It feels like they're going to try to do a war. Like, yeah. That, I mean, that's it, that's what it feels like to me is that they're going to try to do this big war live action, and I'm like, well, uh, it means it's going to be dark. It means you're not going to mm-hmm. see a lot of stuff. It's, Maybe I, I, you know, you know. Remember when we heard the 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 uh, the, the theory about them doing like. Uh, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, especially when they hired the producers and stuff, and everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, they're going to do a Star Wars Game of Thrones. If you're going to do Star Wars Game of Thrones, I mean, the one society that is set up kind of like Game of Thrones is the Mandalorians. Right, and that's what I thought was going to be the the, 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 the Game of Thrones, Thrones guys. guys. Yeah. We're going to take over the Mandalorian stuff, because I was like, well, that could be, because it could be very vicious, and it's a battle, well, and it's a war. Mm-hmm. And then we hear it is Fabro. It's Fabro. <laughs> but... And I will say, and I will note this. I will say the the problem, the one problem I have with this is I wanted to see what happened to what happened in Rebels, what everything they set up in Rebels, what happened to Sabine's family, what happened to Bo-Katan leading them with the dark saber to overthrow the Empire. We never really got resolved with that. They were sent off that way, but we not we didn't get to see how it happened. So, are they going to do this and try to tie that in? How's that going to work if they do it all? Um, that'd be my one problem with it. Um, However, you know, like I said, if you're going to do Amanda, if you're going to do it, and it sounds like they are, um, uh, you know, what would be the, the reasoning why I think it's happening? Number one, John Favreau did voice uh, pre Vizsla in Clone Wars. He was the leader of Death Watch, like the terrorist organization inside Mandalore to bring Mandalore back to their old ways. But he also did the monkey carrier in Solo. He did, he did. You're right. It could totally be the monkey carrier. It could be the monkey guy. Uh, yeah. Could be, what was his name? Rio? Yeah, it could yeah. be totally about Rio. Um, <laughs> but he did do that. And the other big reveal on John Favreau's um, uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. as you can see here, uh, they're at the, he's at the Skywalker Ranch. And right next to him, of course, is Dave Filoni. Now, who knows more about Mandalorians than anybody right now in the Star Wars who makes Star Wars is right, probably Filoni. than Filoni because Filoni's been quoted as saying when he created uh, when he was doing the Clone Wars uh, that he, him, and um, uh, Pablo Hidalgo, who's like the keeper of the hologram and part of the story group, that they made they mapped out how the families worked, how the whole Mandalorian civilization worked. Etc. 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 So they've obviously taken the time to think this through. You bring John on board. He's a proven director. Uh, you know, proven story guy. He did a lot with the Jungle Book. They're going to throw a lot of that CGI in there. You take Dave Filoni and his ideas. Throw that in there with it. Sounds like we've got. That's exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get some sort of Mandalorian Star Wars live action series, and what that's about, how that goes. I don't know. Does it involve? The first order coming back, or do they play a role in that? Because it's only three years after Return of the Jedi. Do they, are they it, part of the Snoke I, factor? I hope it bring. I hope it ties in some way because they're they're spending ten million dollars an episode. Yeah, that's the other thing. A hundred million dollar investment budget, yep. ten million an episode. Game of Thrones budget on top of it started. Yeah, at ten million. Started at ten million. So. Yeah, it, it all the pieces are kind of fitting together here. If it's not, if this is a a farce, then it, uh, it it's a good one. Because right. What if 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 his show takes off, right? So like if it gets a lot of lot of viewers and it becomes a big hit, I'm sure they'll do a season two. Yeah. And then obviously, like with every show, they up the budget for the next season. Right. Because that's what they've done with Game of Thrones. It started out at ten, and it's gradually gotten way 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 higher with the amount of production value and. Mm-hmm. Extras and everything else they throw in there. So I, the battle scenes and yeah. So I'm I'm really hoping that this does the same thing and just progressively gets better. And oh, not, yeah. Then it's not just a one season and done. done. Yeah, I don't think it is either. I think they're if they're investing this much money in it, I I, I foresee at least you know five seasons. I would think at least two or three. Yeah, at least every bit. Um, so uh, I'm definitely excited for what what's to come. You know. Um, Will it be good? Will it not be good? I don't know, but I, it's in good hands again. I, you know, you got John Favreau, the man who started the the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've got Dave Filoni, uh, probably one of the best Star Wars storytellers out there. If you've watched Clone Wars and Rebels, um, so yeah, it, it's got this. It, this one has all the. This is the A team, um, as far as I'm concerned. So 
Hopefully the A team can pull it off. And that'll take us into you. And speaking of Dave, Dave was on a, in an interview with uh, on comicbook.com and uh, it came up, uh, basically came up about um, what happens to Ezra. Well, you know, when we obviously spoiler alert, but when we came to the end of Rebels, Ezra goes off with Thrawn and somewhere with the space whales. And, the they, were, and, and they were on a search for Ezra. And they, yeah, and they were, and uh, you had uh, Ahsoka and you had Sabine looking, going off to find Ezra. And here's what uh, here's what Dave had to say about that. He said, I didn't want something that wrapped up too neatly for Rebels. I wanted this feeling of adventure continuing. And I thought, who better, <coughs> who better to continue the adventure than these two women who were very compelling in both? You know, it's like a unification of Clone Wars and Rebels. Really, taking those two characters further. I have a great deal of... I, great deal of ideas of what they've been up to and where they go i it's re it's really i think fantastic wow that's that just basically says it right there that he's already mapping out he's, he's series. he's working on a project yeah that is the search for ezra now whether it's officially uh condoned or not by disney yet or been greenlit or not i don't know but he's on his own at least at the very, he's at least writing stuff down in my opinion at least right right like so he's working out storyboards right like and it, like like maybe maybe not so much like each individual episode but at least a overall plan for the story arc for the whole series mm -hmm. and what that sounds to me and he says very compelling in both unification of clone wars and rebels which means like the new show will be called something else, mm -hmm. but it will have the characters we know from the other series. Other series yeah. making guest roles like Jason Sindula, like Chopper, like Hera. Um, maybe even, you know, uh, you, you have Ahsoka, obviously. We'll have Ahsoka, Sabine. Sabine. We'll have Ezra. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll get Thrawn. Maybe we'll get Thrawn. Maybe we won't get Ezra or Thrawn at first for the first two seasons or something. Because oh, we, we may not. He's yep. the one they're looking for. Yep. That's the whole reason they're on the adventure and the go and... Maybe he is in the outer regions, and they go out there, and they go on a total side, you know, get the side adventure, mm -hmm. get lost in space in Star Wars. You know, who knows? Um, the possibilities are endless. Um, it. And this is the next. This is what I wanted to see. As soon as Rebels ended, I went. I want this series, and I want it now. And he. I think he knew that when he planned it out, obviously. But um, so, don't get me wrong. I'm happy to see Resistance, and I think Resistance is a great idea and i think it's going to do really well and i think it's it, it, it being experimental and it's it's off doing its own thing but i think this is the series every all the fans want as far as the animation is concerned right now john about the the continuation of rebels and clone yeah. wars well obviously they're going to want that because it's the newest thing and it's the freshest thing it's in their mind. mind yeah and that's what they've, they've watched it all the way through so of course they want continuation it's like we, we really want episode nine mm -hmm. just to see where the next one is everybody's been watching the cartoons once the clone wars and rebels and they want to see what comes next yeah whereas resistance is jumps timelines mm -hmm. different characters basically brand new and yeah. they don't want that. Like, people were really excited about the Clone Wars coming next year. Oh, yeah, the new, yep. I Absolutely. mean, people are really excited about that saved. because, hey, it's stuff we already know and mm -hmm. characters we're, we, we're you know, we're invested we, in. we've already invested in and we've already bought yeah. into this whole scheme. Mm -hmm. We want to see the continuation. So, yeah. like, with anything new, though, I, I really think, I think that Rebel, the Resistance is going to catch on. I do, too. Um, and I think you're... The, the, the hater people are going to... They're, they're, they'll filter themselves out or they'll realize... Um, oh, well, maybe, this is, maybe I yeah, should watch this. This isn't bad. I'll, I'll yeah. watch a few episodes and they'll and get, they'll hooked. get hooked. And I think it's it's brilliant to stagger everything too, especially if you're gonna start something new. Let it start while you're working on something else that just stopped. You know, they're they're going. You know, got mm -hmm. Clone Wars is back now, and we've also got Resistance, and then next we'll have Search for Ezra or whatever they call it. Right. You know, it, just marketing wise, I think it's brilliant. People will buy into it. I know I will. They've already got my money for Clone Wars anyway. So for the streaming service and wherever they put search for Ezra, I'll be there. Um, so yeah, uh, great stuff for sure. Um, speaking of Disney though, and rights and all those fun things. Um, so uh, there was a, uh, apparently Disney, I guess at some point uh, before Disney decided that they were gonna launch their streaming service, um, they, uh, I guess they sold their viewing rights to uh, to Turner Broadcasting. Yeah, um, the broadcasting rights. Yeah. Um, so basically, that means the prequels, the classic trilogy, um, everything up through Solo, 
Um, can't be shown anywhere else except on Turner Broadcasting. <laughs> and not not up till Solo, meaning like Solo happened before right. the original trilogy. Including no, Solo. Including up to Solo that have been made so far. So every Star Wars movie that has come out to date mm-hmm. is not going to be on the streaming service unless they can buy back the rights. Yep, and that's what basically what Bob said on his conference call because somebody questioned him <coughs> about it. And he goes, yeah, everything from 2019 on will be on the streaming service, but everything before we're still negotiating for. So basically, Turner has these rights through 2024. So you're going to have a Disney streaming service with Star Wars content on it, but you will not be able, at least currently, will not be able to watch any of the movies through Episode 8, uh, including Solo. Um, <laughs> this is a huge misfire, and I think that maybe Disney did this before they ever dreamed of a streaming service is the only thing that makes any explanation to me that Turner came along and gave them an outstanding deal when they first bought um, first bought Star Wars and said we'll give you X amount of dollars for everything up through a certain you know through 2024 you know well I think they did it on a, like an individual movie basis so like, yeah. they're like oh we'll pay for this one okay I'll mm-hmm. oh, we'll pay for this one okay. okay well hey Solo's in production okay here's your upfront money so we can have that right. and then Disney decided hey let, we're gonna do our own streaming service and they said here's your money for episode 9 and they said no it's okay yeah but so, now all of a sudden they have to negotiate back right yeah so <sighs> and if I'm Turner Broadcasting I'm like show me the money and I'm not sure Bob is willing to do that. We'll find out. I, I, I got a feeling right now Bob Iger has put this streaming service as, because Bob's going to, everything in the business world says Bob's retiring in a few years. So I think this is his last project, if you will, before he leaves the company. So this is his new, this is his last baby, if you will. How to put his mark on Disney. Yeah. So and I, I wonder if, and I wonder if they just don't, if they just, and, and, and they say no, we're not paying that much money for Star Wars, and let Turner's rights because I'm sure it's not infinite. Right? No, it's only it, until 2024, before, right? So, so they just got to write it out for five years. So they just got to write it out for five years, five, six years, and then we pay you no money, yeah, and we get to show it anyway, yeah. And he and, could and, do that, and that could be, and that could be the tactic that they use with Turner and be like, we just won't pay anything. We'll wait five years. Feel free, yeah, or. We'll pay you this amount of millions of dollars. You give them all back to us. I'm going to show them now. Yeah. And, and and I wonder if they'll do some kind of like joint effort and they'll say, we'll still allow you to show them X amount of times per year mm-hmm. on your stations. During the holidays or something. Yeah, but. That could be a good compromise. But we're going to, it's going to be on our streaming service for yeah. everybody to watch whenever they want. Or you get it till 2020. We'll go the first year without it. But then we want it back, you know. Who knows? It's up to the lawyers. <laughs> and God only knows what happens when lawyers get involved. Or maybe they'll trade. And we're like, we'll give you the rights to air the Fantastic Four. Oh, there's a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And you give us Not. back Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, uh, yeah. Well, actually, they have they just bought Fox, so I think they did get Fantastic Four back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. Over my head, sorry. I'm sorry. All right, so let's talk about something a little bit more, much more honorable than uh, um, than lawyers in closing here in our last story. Um, so uh, and I didn't even bring my my I didn't even bring my Bubba Fett mask upstairs. You, no, you did not. It's in my car. Oh, darn it! Well, uh, we here at Four Mega Guys, West Guys are uh, like to salute Mr. Uh, Jeremy Bullock, and uh, basically Jeremy, after years and years and years of going to Star Wars conventions and uh, going out to see the fans and doing the sign <coughs> countless numbers of photographs and just being an absolutely awesome guy um, I didn't even say who he is oh I'm sorry yeah Jeremy <laughs> Jeremy if you don't know by the picture is uh, played uh, Boba, Boba Fett, Fett uh, especially in Empire Strikes Back as well as uh, Jedi um, so um, yeah it's 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 hard to say goodbye I am was really kind of looking forward to seeing him because I'm going to my first Star Wars celebration ever in in uh, in the spring, and uh, yeah, Jeremy will not be there, um, so I definitely missed out on that one. Um, but yeah, he had uh, basically he just said it's with a heavy heart that I've decided to stop attending conventions and hang up the Fed helmet. Uh, the act, actor shared an official statement: "It has not been an easy decision to make. In 1979, I was called onto the set of Empire Strikes Back to play Boba Fett." And since that day, it has changed the entire direction of my life in such a wonderful way. 
It has been a privilege to have and had the opportunity to inspire so many generations of Star Wars fans. I have had over 20 years of traveling with my wife Maureen to some amazing countries and have met so many wonderful fans. Thank you so much and we will miss you all. So, uh, what a class act. He's a class act guy and he goes off uh, in a class act way. So, right. Um, we thank you, Jeremy, and uh, thanks for all all that you've done obviously for bringing Boba Fett alive for us and um, you know making him super cool and awesome and uh, I mean we, just just think about it. if he hadn't played if he hadn't played the Boba Fett character yeah would we have gotten all the Mandalorian stuff would right. we have would we have gotten you know Sabine would we have gotten and you might say well it's just a guy that put on a suit well he was but he was the man in the suit he's the one he's the one that gave him the swagger he's the one that did the little nod with his hand he's the, you know he did all that stuff you know he's the one he's no good to me dead uh you know he's the one that made Boba Fett cool yep um so yeah absolutely uh heartfelt goodbye and uh thanks Thanks for everything and happy retirement, sir. Mm -hmm. so, Indeed. Yeah, happy retirement. And speaking of retirement, it's almost time for us to retire. But before we do, uh, where can you find Four Midwest Guys if you like this uh, video? Uh, the best place to go is www.4midwestguys.com. Uh, there you'll find links to our iTunes, to our Twitter, uh, to our YouTube page, to our uh, Facebook uh, page as well. Uh, you can follow, like, and subscribe there. Um, and uh, speaking of Twitter, you can follow us at MidwestGuys.com. It's a good place to get all the latest updates on what we're doing. Uh, Brian, where can they find you on Twitter, sir? Uh, they can find me at Zone. And you can find me at BWilly1977. Uh, we are in the process of switching over the... Uh, I need to update the graphic. Uh, we're going over to at 4 Midwest Guys, I believe, uh, for our uh, Instagram account here. Yep here shortly um but for the time being you can go to brian's which is at the underscore real underscore ink so make sure you check us out there follow like and subscribe please reach out to us uh we would love we love hearing from you what we do right what we do wrong what would you like to see us do in the future oh, yeah um, be sure to like and subscribe yep all the stuff over here on this side over here on the screen with the little bells and stuff at there yep yep Make sure you like and subscribe. Like if you hit the bell, then you get a notification every time we post a new video. So mm -hmm. that's definitely after you follow and like, or after you like, definitely hit the bell. So that's absolutely uh, true. Good, good point, Brian. All right. Well, it's been a great show. A lot. We did a lot. We got through a lot. And I uh, just want to thank you, Brian, for being with us. Thanks for having me again, man. And this is B. Willie saying, as always, may the force be with you.